So for this sandwich, I'm gonna use an English muffin. The nice thing about the English muffin is that it has a lot of little holes and crevices, which are great for holding sauce or butter, or in this case, the jam that we're gonna put on it. So we're just gonna start by toasting the English muffin so that it's ready by the time the toppings are ready. So I just sliced it in half, then melted some butter in my cast iron pan, which is set over medium heat, and toasted both halves for a couple of minutes until nicely browned, making sure to press down on them as necessary to get that even browning. Now we'll just set those aside for the time being while we prepare the rest of the toppings, starting with the sausages. We're gonna make our own sausage patties here, so you'll wanna start with some relatively fatty ground pork. I'm using 80-20 ground pork here, which works great. So I've got eight ounces, which will make four patties. So for those of you who've seen my burger video, you'll start to see a lot of similarities here between the burgers and these breakfast sausage patties, starting with the fact that you wanna handle the meat as little as possible to avoid packing it too tightly. So I just dumped all the meat into a bowl and then added the spices from there. So add about two teaspoons of dried thyme, one half teaspoon of chili powder, one half teaspoon of granulated garlic, about a quarter nut or a half teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg, a few twists of some freshly grated black pepper, and about one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup, which is not only gonna add some sweetness, but it'll help the outer surface of the patties to get nicely caramelized as they cook. Now just mix until everything is barely incorporated and form it into four equal sized, loosely packed balls, and then add some salt to the tops of each ball. You'll remember from the burger video that we only want to add salt on the outer surface to maintain the tenderness of the patties. I filmed this after I already cooked two of the patties, so that's why I only have two here, but you should form them into four balls. But each ball should be two ounces. Now it's time to cook them, so heat your cast iron pan over medium high heat until it's ripping hot. Then add two balls at a time, salted side down, and immediately smash them into the pan to spread them thin and increase the surface area in contact with the pan for maximum browning. The pork should release a good amount of its own fat as it cooks, so there's no need to add any oil. Now be sure to salt this side of the patties as well. After about one and a half to two minutes, the outer surface should be nicely browned, so give them a flip and cook for another minute or so on the other side. Once they're done, place the first patty onto your toasted English muffin, followed by a slice of American cheese, and then the second patty. By sandwiching the cheese between these hot patties, it should be melted nicely by the time the sandwich is ready to eat. So now we can move on to the final aspect of the sandwich, which is the scrambled egg. In a bowl, you want to add one egg along with some salt and pepper, and then beat the egg until it's thoroughly scrambled. Now, in order to simulate a classic sort of fast food style breakfast sandwich, I'm cooking the egg inside of a cookie cutter placed on top of my pan, but obviously you don't need to be as extra as this. You can just cook your scrambled egg how you normally would if you want, but either way, with scrambled eggs, I'm just adding a bit of olive oil to my pan, or you could use butter. And then the main thing to keep in mind as they cook is just to keep your pan at a relatively low heat and stir the eggs frequently to end up with a nice fluffy texture. In this case, it's a bit harder to stir within the cookie cutter, so I'm just sort of spinning my rubber spatula to achieve that same effect. Once the eggs have solidified a bit into that circular shape, just flip it over and cook the other side for just a few seconds to finish it off. Then place the egg on top of your sausage patties. Now it's time to add whatever sauces or toppings you like to use, and for me, I'd highly recommend adding some jam. Right now we have a lot of heavier fatty ingredients, so this jam is the perfect way to add some acidity to kind of cut through everything and add another dimension to the sandwich. Now if you didn't see last week's video where I showed you how to make a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, you can check that out by clicking right here. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you over there.